seven three. Now, for the past, has it been a week or so? We 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 had a self-appointed yeah. Uh, Ghana Rise Ambassador, <laughs> Rise ambassador yeah. uh, who has the entire nation talking. I, I, I saw the tweet. I rights. saw the tweet. I don't remember what time it was. Sometimes a very obscure time of the day. And he says, I have appointed myself mm -hmm. the Ghana Rice Ambassador. And I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a few days later, this thing is just taking a life of its own, yeah. you know. And um, our CEO is right here. We're going to have a conversation about Ghana food, Ghana rice. Good morning, Samir. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Very well. I'm fine. Thank you. You must be tired. Well, you're on points of view last night as well. Well, the story of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's now, how we do it. Can you tell us the story of how you ended up appointing yourself the Ghana Rice? It's just, um, it's, um, <laughs> I think it's just, I don't know whether it's a, it's a com compassionate energy, mm. you know. Because really, I, 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 my line of business has nothing to do with rice. Indeed, I know nothing about, about rice farming or cultivation. Um, but it just turns out that um, in following some of our news leads, it took us to the rice plantations. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the, the dire situation um, of unemployment and helplessness that I saw on the faces of mm. the rice farmers that actually got me into this. Um, I didn't have a clue. I mean, I, I had experienced a bit of rice farming when I was a kid. Uh, but really, under 10 years, there was not much I could yeah. see. All I remember is that we, we used to beat the rice in, in the sacks and then they would go and use a pump point to also the things more small. <laughs> you know? But now technology has advanced the processing. Um, hitherto, the, the major feature in, 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 in most uh, rice mills from Ghana uh, would have stones and yeah. other objects in there. At times you'd be eating there, you, you crack one bean from <laughs> another species, you know. <laughs> Um, and uh, all those things, yeah. I believe, uh, would be a thing of the past because of the new ways of processing. And they had found themselves in a place where they could not get buyers for their harvest. Mm. Um, you know, it costs them money to even even harvest. Yeah. Uh, because wow. they they would either have to hire laborers. Or they need to rent the um, combined the harvester. Combined harvesters. Mm. So um, this is where they found themselves, um, and most of them have large, large tracts of land. Mm. Uh, you are talking about 10, 20, 50, 100 acres of rice plantations, wow. and they were just left, you know, helpless. So we followed through the chain to see what had changed. Mm. That's when we were. Um, made aware of the Avnash company, okay. the biggest millers in Ghana, actually. They are the biggest in the whole country, wow. um, situated in Nyangpala, or the Tamale Nyangpala Road. Okay. Okay. So we went, we visited um, um, uh, Avnash and noticed the, the capacity of the equipment. Now, the equipment's capacity is 180,000 metric tons of rice mill a year. Wow. And this means that they can mill about a quarter of all the rice that we consume in Ghana. That's wow. just That's significant. Just that mill alone. Wow. wow. So uh, it, it has a good potential mm. and it works perfect. It does color separation. It, <laughs> it does object separation. It does everything. It does power boiling. It does straight rice. It, you know, wow. everything. Um, according to them, is the biggest single mill in Africa. Wow. You know, so I just thought that, why, why should you mm. have water and still go thirsty? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, doesn't make sense. Uh, machine is here. Previously, that was the bigger problem. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the mill. Now the mill is here and nobody's buying. Mm -hmm. So I spoke with them that, look, if you would do us a favor and which favor i said 
if you would stretch yourself to buy the produce for us this year, mm. I would take it upon myself to champion the cause to purchase what you have in stock. Hmm. Because the previous year, they milled 20,000 metric tons. Okay. And they could sell only 10,000. Wow. Okay. So the 10,000, if you go to the Avnash yard, is there. It's just there. Goodness. Okay. So it's there in paddy rice sacks. Mm. Um, because you, when you process, you can't keep it for too long. Mm. Otherwise, you will attract weevils. Yeah. And uh, because they don't apply chemicals like the foreign rice uh, people do, yeah. um, it's, it's, it can go bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see paddy rice, stacks of paddy rice, 10,000 metric tons, lying waste. Wow. So I said that, so we will help you push this so that you buy um, the, 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 the rice from Farmgate. We followed up with a meeting with the leadership of Avnash, including the chairman himself, Mr. Mechandani. Okay. We met with him, and he gave us his word that, well, he, <laughs> and it, look, he said this, I, I, it cost me $30 million hmm. to put up that thing, and yes. I don't need a Peswa from it. Wow. I don't need a Peswa. If I needed money, I won't put it there. Hmm. But I wanted to help the people of the North. Wow. And that really, really struck something in me. Mm. That he's he's Ghanaian of Indian origin. Okay. He uses Ghanaian passport. Mm. Somebody who's been living in Ghana since 1960 okay. has seen it all. Been but he was forced to relocate to Nigeria at some point during the revolution. Mm. He has 16 companies the size of Unilever in Nigeria. Wow. So what does he need? So, he said, "I wanted to help." Summons. Yeah. Yeah. Come Christmas, when we all have our local rice on our lunch table, dinner tables, how would that transform the livelihoods of some of the farmers up north? I mean, uh, look, I mean, the, the point is about they taking advantage of the euphoria mm. that has erupted as a result of uh, uh, what this action is coming up with. We want to see a change in our attitudes. Mm. We are not against the foreign importation rice. of foreign rice. Yeah. Repeat, we are not against it. What we are saying is that we as citizens should learn to eat what we grow. Mm -hmm. If before you you never tasted it, it's time. This is an opportunity for you mm -hmm. to, taste, to it taste it and perhaps keep to it mm -hmm. because it will keep somebody employed. employed. Yeah. And you see, rice is about one of the few staples in Ghana that can be cultivated in every region. Yeah. Mm. All the 16 regions. Wow. You, you understand? Yeah. And in large quantities. So if we really want to do it, we can do it. Mm. And according to the Rice Millers Association, we have enough potential to feed the whole country to the extent that we wouldn't have to import even a grain of rice. Wow. And that would be the day. Mm. And that would be the day. And what would that mean for our economy? If we of get course, to point if you can save one billion dollars every year, yeah. if you can save one billion or re-allocate, um, yeah. redirect one billion dollars every year into more critical sectors of the economy, that's positive for the economy. Yeah. Because, and again, if we can raise our consumption level, I mean, local consumption level to that level, what it means is that it's going to keep more people employed. Mm. And, you know, the rice farmer is just like a tenth of the activities of the chain. Mm. After the farmer, of course, the miller. miller yeah. After the miller, there's the other processing, the branding, the marketing, yeah. the trade, the route, the merchandising. The, you know, all the activities in the chain mm. become activated. Yeah. And so that's what we see is going to increase our employment levels. I, I, I also look at the foreign exchange and the burden on our forex. Would, would, that, would it impact course, that as well? Of course, of course, of okay. course, of course, okay. of course. Yeah. I mean, if you are not importing more, you don't put pressure on your yeah. forex. Mm. So I think that's what it is. Okay. Now, can you address some of the myths we've heard? I think um, yesterday an up-and-coming politician or a politician tweeted that the local rice is more expensive than the ones that we import. Can you address that? Well, I, you see... I. I, I say that like for like, mm -hmm. local rice is cheaper. Okay. And I'll maintain that like for like. Okay. I mean, if you go and buy perfume rice um, or 
or say a, a cheap import. Mm. I mean, they're imported, right? They are cheap ones too. Mm -hmm. If you okay. go and buy a cheap by the one, grade. yeah, of course. Okay. You go and buy a cheap okay. one, and you see jasmine rice mm. from Ghana. Mm. Definitely, the jasmine rice yes. will be more, more expensive. Yeah. Mm. But like for like, I am very certain that it's less expensive mm. to purchase Ghana rice. But be that as it may, if if I, I, without admitting that is the case, if Ghana rice turns out to be more expensive, it only means that the rice millers and the producers have a lot more work to do. Mm. One, it only means that the government will have to help the rice producers mm. because it is a local staple now. Yeah. And yes. to keep people employed, everywhere else, farmers are helped. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. In the U.S., don't they help farmers? All the time. Yes. They give them something, subvention here, here, here. So I think that if it comes to that point, rice farmers mm -hmm. will have to be helped. Mm -hmm. okay. so when we, yeah. Go ahead. So when we look at um, the, the value chain uh, right now, you, f you feel that the farmers are the, the most important place to help? Or, or we should look well, at... Well, you know, I don't have enough information to make that determination. Okay. Mm -hmm. But some somebody needs to be helped. Okay. Somebody that needs to be helped. Yeah. 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 Now you were speaking of the US earlier. There's this whole global movement of eat things that are actually able to rot. So if it goes bad in six yeah, months, eight months, organic is actually good for you. And we have organic meals uh, all across the country. Can you touch on that? Because I think you mentioned that. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's anti-globalization. We are mm -hmm. all we've all been overtaken by all these globalization stuff. Where mm -hmm. you know the bigger the better. Um, you know, instead of you, you need to scale up, scale up, um, be everywhere so that you reduce your unit cost. And we as a country, we've subscribed to just every and anything. So it comes back and then it hurts us. Mm. But next door, Nigeria, what mm. have they done? They have secured their borders. Yeah. I mean, they, we say that they have closed their borders, but I say they have secured their, their borders. borders. Why? They, because they have internal work to do. Mm. They have work to do internally for the benefit of Nigerians. Yeah. It may hurt in the short term, but in the long term, they will be saying in hallelujah. Okay. This is it. So, Rice Ambassador, how do we go from a place where people make excuses uh, for not using locally made goods to a point where you go to a restaurant and they are proud to tell you that our rice was produced by a local farmer? You know, in some of these efforts, all you need to do is to get started. Hmm. I mean, not everybody will subscribe to it in another 10 years. Not everybody will subscribe to it. And that's another reality. Hmm. But it's okay to have somebody start hmm. for others to follow. And it will make a change. For me, I just want a day when we wake up and see Ghana rice become the default reference point when we are talking about rice. Hmm and not the other way around. Because prior to the 90s, local rice was it. Mm. It was just in the 90s where we opened up our economy that you found all these Thailand, Vietnamese, Indian rice invading our markets, you know. I mean, it's okay to do that, but when they displace our own um, um, rice, mm. then I, I have a problem with mm. that. Okay. So what's next for you? Next is to keep talking. Um, you see, and again, I don't arrogate myself an authority in, in rice um, production. I, I know nothing. <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's a voice of reasoning that it stands to reason that you eat what you grow. Otherwise, you cannot grow your economy. What do you want to tell our viewers about well, so they go out there to buy rice? Following after this, mm -hmm. we are saying that you find the next available local rice. You may have a reason not to, but just try it. Now, we are also giving you an opportunity to come taste locally produced rice. If you haven't done that before, on the 14th and on the 15th of December at the Aviation Social Center, we are doing the Made in Ghana Christmas uh, food fair. So everything made in Ghana, everything for Christmas made in Ghana. 
chicken made goat. in Ghana. <laughs> goat made. You know the goat, the one that smells somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that one made that in Ghana. One. Uh, the rice, uh, or, no, or papu. A papu. <laughs> yeah. So everything you need, yeah. you'll get it on the 14th and 15th of the Under one there. roof. And then there'll be jollof uh, competitions, competitions <laughs> and, and all the like. So, so it, it's going to be fun. It's yeah. going to be fun. Awesome. Yeah. And of course, uh, for more information, you can call us at 0205-973-973. Thank you so much, Samuel. As You're welcome. Like the self and this afternoon, rice make sure ambassador. you eat uh, Ghana, Ghana rice. rice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive Breakfast Daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment and share with your friends.